that I have loved you. Greater love has no one than this, that someone lay down his life for his friends. You are my friends if you do what I command you. You know, over the years I've had the opportunity to see a lot of really neat events. Um, and I always wonder, well, how do they happen? How does a pitcher get to throw a baseball 100 miles an hour and a guy 60 some feet away swing gracefully and be able to hit it over the fence? How does Peyton Manning on a Sunday afternoon drill a football to a guy that's covered by three receivers? How does an artist take a white canvas and an hour later have a masterpiece? How does Rick and Michael on Christmas Eve make two French horns sound so remarkable? How does our brother Steve take a message every Sunday and speak to each of our hearts? One thing I've learned over the years is it takes a lot of talent to reach a certain level, but it also takes a lot of practice. That's why these people are good at what they do. But how do they get to that certain level? People are usually excel at a certain level when no one is watching all that practice time. Their performances are a result of all that practice. But that practice takes sacrifice. And that's what we're here to talk about this morning. The sacrifice of time. I take a walk every, usually every afternoon with the CFO of my company. The man is a brilliant man, intellectually and financially. As a matter of fact, a couple months ago, he was walking with me and he says, Scott, you know I'm at that point in my life I have more money than time left. He's a wise man. But he's wise in saying that it's time that's important now in our lives. When we reflect on what happened 2,000 years ago, Jesus gave 12 men three years to learn about the sacrifices. He taught them what God wanted them to know and would change the world forever. But not only did he tell them, on that Good Friday, he showed them what the sacrifice was really about. He gave his life for their sins. He took the time to teach his disciples, but he took the time then to die for us and give us a new life forever. And that's what we're here to celebrate this morning. I don't think any of us here this morning, even remotely, and I don't think any of us even think we could understand what that sacrifice truly entailed. How much pain, how much suffering for the sins of the entire world. How much that must have cost. But yet, this morning we celebrate what our Lord and Savior has done for us. I think the one thing he wants for us to do is when we leave this building each and every Sunday is to sacrifice our time and tell someone who doesn't know what Jesus Christ is all about and tell them about the fantastic life that he has planned for us in eternity. So will you pray with me this morning as we prepare our hearts? Heavenly Father, we know time is not something we'll have forever on this earth. But we do know there is the eternity of time. And that's so much what we look forward to one day, Lord. But it's only possible because of what Jesus did on the cross for us. Father, may each of us in turn take time to reach out to the lost, to our families first and foremost, because each of us have them and tell them. And then 
with our coworkers, with people we just come across every day, and tell them of the gospel of Jesus Christ and what he can do for them. Father, we thank you this morning for the cross. We thank you for your ultimate sacrifice, which paid our sin debt in full. Now, Lord, we ask for your blessing upon the bread, which represents your body, which was given up for us. And we pray this in your holy name. Amen. Amen. Mm -hmm.